Hi guys, great to be here with you today. We're over halfway through our study of 1 Peter, and I think this next passage really relates to all of us a lot of the time. Talking about when we go through bad times, when things don't go our way, or when we start to suffer. So how do we react when we suffer? In 1 Peter 3, 9-10, it tells us how we should react. It says, Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. You don't have to tell me how hard it is to be nice to someone who's pretty horrible to you. I'm sure we could think of a million different ways to treat someone who's mean to us, who bullies us, or even worse. We'd probably go home and think of all the ways we could get them back to either teach them a lesson or to make sure they'll never do that to us again. And maybe some of us might go ahead with those plans. But after reading this passage from 1 Peter, I hope that changes our thought process. I hope that changes the way that we react and treat others. If we do treat others in a bad way because they treat us in a bad way, then really you're no better than they are. And just like it says in Romans 12, 19, that we should forgive others because if we punish people for doing wrong, then God won't. Which might sound like a bit of a back, backstabbing kind of thing to do. I will forgive you because I know God will sort you out. But it isn't. It isn't a backstabbing kind of thing to do. It isn't double handed or anything like that. Read the, if you read the four chapters of Jonah or the three chapters of Habakkuk to, and you'll find out what I mean by that. God's punishment isn't always what we think it is. God doesn't want us to punish others. He doesn't want us to deal out our own judgments. God wants to forgive others and just like he forgives us every time we ask him. Yes, it can feel like we are suffering for doing good. That we are doing the right things but get left at or teased or even worse. But the Bible tells us that God is slow to anger and abounding in love, which is something we should all be striving for. And let us have a peace and not the war that's like raging inside us. Having a peaceful heart, having a loving and patient spirit will help us do what I think is important, which I think is a very important part of this passage. And it says in verse 15 to 16, Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone, to everyone who asks you and give the reason for the hope you have. But to do this with, a gen with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. This says that if you are living for Jesus, if your life has been transformed by his love, then people will ask you about it. Often this can, be, can feel like a very awkward moment and our response can often depend on how we're feeling at the time or based on something that's just happened. But God is saying that we should have an answer ready for those times. So why is it that you have the hope that you have? Why is it that you follow Jesus? And having an answer to that question, answering it in a way that is gentle, respectful and keeping a clear conscience will help show people why you have that hope. And it will show that those people who put you down that they are wrong about Jesus. So let's do that. Let's not repay evil with evil, but repay it with good. And let us have an answer for the hope that we have in Jesus.